How's it going, friends, fellow op-eds? My name is Andrew. Welcome back to Drewski's Brewski. Welcome to the very first brewery spotlight on this here channel. Today we're at a personal favorite of mine. In fact, my favorite brewery to go to. Nice and local right here in Dyer, Indiana. We're at Windmill Brewing. Let's take a quick step inside and uh, see what goes on behind the scenes, both in the tap room and in the brewery itself. Come on, follow me. My name is Andrew. Again, welcome to Drewski's Brewski's very first brewery spotlight. We are at one of my favorite spots here in Dyer, Indiana, Windmill Brewing. And uh, we are here um, with this very, very awesome gentleman. Uh, please go ahead and introduce yourself, sir. Uh, my name is Mike Lowacki. I'm a head of brewery operations here at Windmill Brewing and head brewer here. Um, I've been here for about three years. Also run a side project out of Windmill Fort Oh, Okay, and I've had I've had uh, beers from both Windmill and Fort Local. All of them are very very good. Never awesome. had any complaints. Uh, you're just like a madman, kind of behind the scenes <laughs> yet, uh, at your breweries. Uh, and uh, like I said, I've never had any complaints about any of the beer I've ever had. So, oh, yeah. um, well, you kind of already answered the first question about how long you've worked for them. So. Uh, but how long have you been doing your side project for and local for? Is that um, relatively new? Or? For and local is relatively new, but it's been a brainchild for a very long time. Um, I remember when I worked at One Trick Pony, um, and that was the first brewery that I ever worked at. Well, technically, Three Floyds was the first brewery that I ever worked at, but uh, when I worked at One Trick Pony, um, I came up with the idea of. Uh, of form local and what I wanted to do essentially and kind of been slowly, slowly moving and kind of uh, gaining more credibility for myself as a brewer right. and stuff like that. I mean, if I would try to open it up when I worked at One Trick Pony, I mean, I was like a keg cleaner. Right. You know? yeah. So, like, I didn't even know, like, really, I knew how to brew. I didn't know, like, how to manage a brew system or a brewery and the equipment and everything that goes along with it. Uh, Equipment is something that's really crazy in a brewery, and most breweries, I should say, um, in the sense that anything could go wrong at any time. Uh, yeah. There's a, a big saying between industry guys uh, and gals. Um, it's the, the the notion of always something. There's always something that will always just bring itself out and always bring up a problem. But I think that's kind of uh, one of the cool and magical things about working in a brewery is it's never, it's never not exciting in the sense that there is monotony. I mean, everything is different. Everything can change all the time. Equipment can malfunction, go wrong. The entire day can go completely disarrayed, completely. But uh, I think it's kind of like a level of insanity that I needed to keep right. yeah. myself uh, constantly stressed and focused. <laughs> and that's that's really good. It's good to have variety in what you're yeah, line of work. Absolutely. Really. Same thing can get boring and then makes yeah. you not want to go to work. And, yeah. Well, well, take this week for instance. I uh, brewed. I believe this is my fourth beer brewing this week. And tomorrow I'm driving up to Michigan to get fruit for um, an upcoming sour that we're doing. It's a pro runner. Okay. So, not sure how many people are going to be sticklers and say a pro runner's not a sour, but it's a hard beer. So. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of the same realm, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so um, if you had to say past, present, um, what has been your favorite beer you've ever put oh, out? Man. Whether it be a windmill beer, foreign local, um, like I said, it could be a beer you have right now, or it could be something maybe you put out a couple of years ago. There's been a couple. Um, there was a beer that I did with uh, Sac Trois yeast. Um, it was called Udu Trois. It was like a 9% double IPA uh, with all citra. It was really awesome. Um, the entire idea of the name was uh, it was basically a single hop double IPA fermented with Sac Trois yeast. So basically like one, two, three, and Udu right. Trois meaning one, two, three in French. Yeah. So I really like that one. Um, I really think Berries and Dreams is a fucking awesome hit. I mean, I 
love that beer. Um, I honestly could like fucking drink it at like any time of the year. It oh, makes yeah. me really happy. Um, unfortunately, I don't know why we don't produce it more. I mean, I'm the one who makes that decision, so I, yeah, I feel yeah. like I should just start making it more. That is a very good. That's actually what I'm yeah. sipping on right now. It's like we verify that. But, uh, um, Orange Theme School is always awesome. I fucking love that beer. Um, it was there was a a lot of obstacles in trying to make that beer. I actually contacted Albany's confectionery company, uh, and they wanted to work with me. They wanted to basically do like collaborations. I would I would have loved to put Albany's like with, in collaboration with Albany, right. or at least yeah. put them on our label and just like throw a notion out to them. I mean, we're both on Route 30, we're yeah. both in the area. I mean, um, they, I believe, are still ranked as the world's best gummy bear makers. I and think their right. candy gets sent nationwide. Their facility's amazing. So I, I thought it would be really cool to work with them. Um, and I basically got up to their executive director of whatever, uh, some fancy title. Right. And everyone was like, yes, we want to do this. I'll send you to this guy to make sure to confirm. And then that guy would say yes. He's like, I just need to confirm with this woman. Go to her, talk to her. She said yes. And the last woman that I had to talk to um, decided not to. It was a pretty funny conversation, actually, but I won't get into that right, right yeah. now. But uh, that, that beer is always awesome. I mean, just working with crazy ingredients like that. I mean, I know that like candy isn't like the craziest of ingredients, but uh, to kind of like pull these odd, odd, like, odds and ends ingredients together and make something work really well, I think that's like really cool. So, uh, I don't know, I think I'm more of a, I think I'm more inclined to like beers that have like crazier ingredients or like yeah. push the boundaries a little bit. Um, Mysterious Puddles is also like one of my favorites that we've done, which has a uh, Sauvignon Blanc grape must in it, oh, which yeah. is really awesome. I mean, um, I had to go through a lot to get that too, so uh, there's a small like, a lot of these beers have a small story behind them. I mean, a lot of stuff doesn't work exactly how you think it does. Like, a lot of stuff is not, like, as easy as just ordering something right. and going, like, going online, buying it, putting it in your shopping cart, and having it shipped the next day to you. Um, with uh, the two grape juice beers that I did most recently, um, that uh, two, two Rare to Live and Two Rare to Die, yeah. um, I actually had to drive to Pennsylvania in a rented minivan. Oh, wow. Uh, and I took... 2,000 pounds over the weight limit of what this vehicle could take. So, I mean, I drove to Pennsylvania, uh, got in there, uh, it was like at the tip of New York, essentially, where Pennsylvania and New York. Yeah. Um, I got into Pennsylvania maybe around 1 or 2 in the morning, and then I woke up, or I, I got into like my hotel, and then woke up, checked out, and then went directly to that farm, picked up like, shit, almost, a, I don't know, the, a very hefty amount of liquid, lot, essentially. Yeah. yeah, and um, yeah, it was just a fucking huge journey and a massive pain in the ass. But like, that's a lot of stuff that like nobody ever even gets to hear about. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, a lot of these beers just have a very like difficult journey about like getting like just random ingredients for stuff that like we're doing. So, uh, like I said, I think I'm more inclined to like the beers that I think. I put a lot of effort and time into as oh, far as like absolutely. getting an, an ingredient and say if there's like a hat, like if I'm like reeling the fish in and it's like not wanting to come in, like I think a lot of those times, uh, those are uh, usually like some of my favorite years. Yeah, man, that's, you gotta have a little, you know, it gives you that sense of pride, you know, like you work for it a little bit more and yeah, you can be proud of it. Yeah, so that's cool. Well, what's awesome is like a lot of times, I mean, 99.5% of the time, I mean, unless you're, like, if, if, unless you're someone like you that knows me in the tap room, mm -hmm. and, like, maybe, like, uh, if I have time to chat about a beer or something, like, nobody will ever know about these stories, you know what I mean? Right, like, yeah. It's awesome to see someone drinking a beer, and, like, to me, there's an entire, like, three-week span before that, so it's really awesome to, like, really see in the physicality of, like, someone getting their beer and drinking it, and then 
comedians like this shit, man. I fucking traveled half across the country right. to get this beer in your hand, so people don't know that. Yeah, and there's a huge sense of pride in that, so I, yeah, I, I am very prideful about that. I would. Yeah. So actually, that, that leads me into my next question for you. So, obviously I know that, you know, depending on the beer, it, it, it varies a lot, but on average, how long does it take you to make a standard beer? Like, how long does it take to brew the entire thing? From grain to glass, I can usually put out a beer in about three weeks. Um, if I'm going crazy and can rush stuff or need to rush stuff, I can push a beer out maybe about like two weeks. Uh, my record uh, is 10 days actually um, for Berries and Dreams. The first run of it for our anniversary party last year, um, I put that beer out in 10 days and that like had to come out that day because I think I packaged it maybe like uh, the day of our anniversary party or the day directly before okay. the day of our anniversary right. party. That's actually, uh, for some, you know, me, I'm not too experienced with you know, brewing and all that, obviously, but that's actually um, quite a bit sooner than I thought. You know, I figured it was more involved. But like, like I said, obviously, you know, if you get into, like, you know, barrel-aged stuff, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot longer. You have to actually physically age them. Yeah. But, um, but I suppose it does make sense, you know, like, you know, roughly three weeks to a month for an average beer, you know. It's, yeah, except for, I would say that's pretty average and normal for most breweries as well. Um, there's a, a couple breweries out there that have um, given tutorials on how they push a beer out in 10 days, I believe, or 14 days. It um, doesn't matter what beer it is. And I've tried to follow that, um, and it makes my time a lot more efficient. Um, obviously, if a beer sits, if a, if a beer gets out faster, that's less time and money that needs to be spent on that right, beer. Just, right. just imagine every tank is like an apartment. You know what I mean? If this beer can get out in two weeks, there's no need to keep it out for four. You know what I mean? Right, right. It's one just clogging up like my production line essentially. Yep. Like if I keep it there, that means I can't like roll out another beer into that tank because that's just staying there. So yep. I do try to be pretty efficient with my time. Um, but generally it's about three weeks. Um, I am trying to push that a little a little further though, like uh, trying to do stuff a little bit faster. I would like to be able to produce more beer than we currently are, so I think I'm going to be upping our production, um, probably be grabbing a tank, um, hopefully very soon. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Pocro Brewing um, just closed their doors for the last day, okay. um, and they're actually selling some of their equipment, so uh, I'm trying to work with them. Uh, Joe Pocro is a, or Joe Pocropinski is a really good guy, and it'd um, be nice to you know, maybe like grab those tanks. Yeah. And kind of yeah. go to go to a friend instead of you know them just selling them online and going wherever in the country. So yeah, yeah. Hopefully, I can get those tanks. Um, if you see our tap room recently. Uh, we have no cans. I mean, we uh, released um, I think somewhere around 150, somewhere between 150 and 200 cases of beer, and they are all completely gone for the most part in our tap room. So. Uh, we're having like a shortage issue, which is a great problem. But that right, just means yeah. that I need to start producing more beer faster. So, uh, and that's good for my bank account for sure. Yeah, definitely. You know, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so um, I think one of the uh, probably one of the biggest questions I know, probably one of the last questions we got here is, if you could collab with any brewery anywhere, so even across seas, anywhere in the world, even maybe maybe if they're closed, who would you pick and why? I would say probably. Uh, Tired Hands, probably. Um, I just look up to them. I think what they do is fucking phenomenal and uh, very innovative and just completely out of left field. Um, and I like to think that I brew similar to that, um, or at least in that realm. Uh, but they're they're a brewery that I look up to essentially. Um, when I first started. Brewing all of these like milkshake styles and everything. Um, Justin, our owner, and I had been seeing these tired hands posts in like these uh, like a Facebook and Instagram for like fucking outrageous. And I mean, the beers that I would see on there would make me just like drool at my phone. And it was uh, 
it was like a stimulus almost. Like right, I can't yeah. get those beers here. I've always like wanted those beers, so it's like you know what? Like I might as well just like try my own hand at it. Right. And yeah. uh, try doing that. Um, we'll see if maybe I, I won't get sued for it, but I, I would like to do a beer called Inspired Hands, basically off of Tired Hands. Yeah. That yeah. Be, that that might be like a little close for their legal team. Right. You know? Yeah. So I would like to ask their permission first if I can, but uh. Yeah, I, I think I owe a lot of my creativeness to Tire Hands and LSD. <laughs> well, hey, you got to get it from somewhere. You, know? you got to be creative through something, man. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I hope you uh, were thoroughly involved with uh, what goes on behind the scenes, uh, especially here at Windmill, but maybe even, you know, maybe your favorite brewery in your hometown. So I'm sure a lot of the stuff is the same, obviously, other than personal ideas and personal beers. But... I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this little interview we had with Mikey here. Thank you very much, sir, for uh, agreeing to do it with me. Cheers, and thanks. thanks for having me. Thanks.